Which would you say is the most beautiful soprano or tenor or baritone voice you've ever heard? I dread being asked a question like that. It's much too wide to permit of a narrow answer. There is just one exception, though. On the subject of basses, I know I'm not alone in feeling that the most beautiful bass has been the voice of Boris Christoph. The mellifluous tones of Boris Christoph with a brief passage from Verdi's opera Arnani. Christoph was born in 1918 in a place called Plovdiv in Bulgaria. He was trained as a lawyer, but his family was musically inclined and encouraged him in his main hobby, which was singing. It ceased to be... Boris of Bulgaria heard Christoph sing a solo with the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral Choir. Bulgaria, felt the far-sighted king, was well enough equipped with lawyers but low on top-quality bases. So off went Christoph with a royal scholarship in his pocket to study in Rome. Thus it came about that Christoph the Slav, predestined by vocal quality for the marvellous gallery of Russian bass roles, became equally preeminent in the Italian repertoire. No one who saw and heard him as King Philip II of Spain in Verdi's Don Carlos is likely to forget the experience, especially his moving interpretation of the great aria Dormi Rosol. The old king has made the mistake of taking a young bride who doesn't love him. In his regal splendour he sleeps alone. Soon it will be the longer and even lonelier sleep beneath the vaults of the royal tomb.
Boris Christoph as Philip II of Spain in Verdi's Don Carlos. Christoph was indeed a regal figure on stage, a man of tremendous presence and with a dark and flashing eye. He's always been very self-conscious about his appearance and once said in an interview, my best age was when I did military service in the Bulgarian cavalry on my horse called Ural. Then I looked magnificent. The last time I saw him on stage was when he sang that aria of King Philip's during the Covent Garden Gala for the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977. I remember that at the rehearsal, the other artists involved rather hurried on and off stage to get things settled as quickly as possible. Not so Christoph. He stalked onto the stage, immaculately dressed, his overcoat draped round his shoulders like some royal cloak, and arranged every detail exactly as he required it. And in the evening performance, there was a distinct atmosphere of one crowned head singing for another. In many of his appearances as King Philip, notably the famous Visconti production of 1958 at Covent Garden, Christoph had as his baritone partner his own brother-in-law, Tito Gobbi. The role Gobbi sang was the Marquis of Posa, and here are the two of them with a duet in which the king asks the Marquis to keep a watchful eye on the young queen and Don Carlos. Carlos is the king's son by a previous marriage and is now suspected of being his rival in love. The duet ends with a warning to Posa that because of his political liberalism, he's on the hit list of that alarming figure, the Grand Inquisitor. Oh, lo sguardo tuo penetra il mio soglio del capo mio che grava la corona l'angosta prende il duol guardo or tu la mia reggia La fanno, la circonda, sgraziato genitor, sposo più triste ancor. Dire, che dite mai? La regina, un sospetto mi torna. Mio figlio, era l'alma insieme pura, con la mano sotto al cielo, il bene che tolse a me. Il loro destino affido a te, scrutta quel cor che un folle amor trascinò, sempre lecito a te di scoprar la regina. O che solo sei un uomo fra lo stuolo, Oh, my God. 
Guarda! A duet from Verdi's Don Carlos, sung by Tito Gobbi and Boris Christoph, who in real life married two sisters. An entry in Signora Gobbi's diary for 1957 gives a delightful glimpse of what life was like camp following these two titans of the operatic stage. Five beautiful performances, she wrote. Our two boys so wonderful. My sister and I bursting with pride and crying together. It's going to be hard to find another pair like them. Their duets matchless, each so good in his own right. Sadly, though, the family quartet was not always in such close harmony. In 1963, during joint appearances in Chicago, someone gossiped to Christoph about an uncomplimentary remark allegedly made by Gobby. Christoph, his Slavonic pride aflame, was said to have turned up Shea Gobby and punched his brother-in-law on the nose. The upshot was that for eight years the two couples were totally estranged, and to mention Gobby to Christoph or vice versa was asking for trouble, which produced a crop of headaches for casting directors around the world. It was doubtless no coincidence that Christoph excelled in the portrayal of complex characters, one obvious example being the title role in Mussorgsky's Boris Godunov. Boris has intrigued and murdered his way to the throne of Russia and finds that uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. The second of his great monologues provides a fine example of Christoph at his interpretative best. There's tremendous intensity as Boris reflects that the judgment of God must surely await him and there's pent-up anger about the state of Russia, everywhere hunger, conspiracy and fear. But at the beginning of the excerpt, which I'd like to play you now, what the Tsar laments is how little he's been able to enjoy the love of his children. And in passages such as this, Christoph could always find a touchingly personal piano tone. It carried to the back of the biggest theatre, but it was as if the audience were eavesdropping on an essentially private grief. <laughs> Yeah. 
Boris Christoph is that tortured soul, Mussorgsky's Boris Godunov. A role which stands in fine contrast to Godunov's introspection is that other war horse of the bass repertoire, Mephistopheles in Gounod's Faust. Faust has sold his soul to Mephisto in return for the gift of youth, but by the end of the opera he's suffering agonies of remorse for having seduced and then abandoned Marguerite, who is now lying in a prison cell in a state of virtual insanity. This is all child's play to Mephisto, who can get people out of prison cells with a flick of the wrist, but, alas, things go adrift. In the final trio, Mephisto urges Faust to run for it while there's still time, and Faust begs Marguerite to flee with them. But she throws a spanner in the works by calling on angels pure and radiant to come down and save her soul, which they obligingly do. Alert! Alert! Vous êtes perdu, si vous tardez encore, je ne m'appelle plus. Aidez-moi, aidez-moi, le quartier, la garde-moi, exposez une soleil de feu. Danse les ombres, le jour élevé, de leurs pièces sonores, j'entends nos chevaux frapper le pavé. Viens, sombre, peut-être une étance encore.
Boris Christoph as a baffled Mephisto in the final scene from Guno's Faust with Victoria de los Angeles and Nikolai Geda. Christoph's operatic career took him to virtually all the great opera houses of the Western world, though, strangely enough, never to the Met in New York. He was due to make his American debut there back in 1950, but was barred from doing so as an ex-enemy alien under a piece of legislation known as the McCarran Act. Had he never set foot on any operatic stage, though, he would still have made an immense contribution to the musical world through his work as a recitalist, especially in the field of Russian song, a field in which he also did much valuable musicological research. Largely, I feel sure, because of the language barrier, Russian songs have never rivaled the international popularity of German leader. And with his recitals and recordings, Kristoff became their outstanding champion. Perhaps the best-known Russian song over here has always been the one called in English, None But the Lonely Heart, by Tchaikovsky. And Kristoff's recording of that is a glorious welter in the more mournful regions of the Slav soul. The original poem was in fact written in German, by Goethe no less, Nur wer die Sehnsucht kennt. Only one who knows true longing knows how I suffer. My innermost being is on fire, I faint and gaze into the distance. The one I love is far away. Well, German it may once have been, but by the time Tchaikovsky and Christoph have had their way with it, it's as Slav as a song can be. Boris Christoph with Tchaikovsky's None But The Lonely Heart. Like most people born in Central Europe in the first quarter of this century, Christoph did have plenty of opportunity to become acquainted with hardship and grief. I left him earlier in this program, happily studying in Rome in 1942, but thereafter he spent some very hazardous times. After the Allies' invasion of Italy the following year, he made his way to Salzburg 
But then Bulgaria joined the war against Germany and he disappeared as an enemy alien into a Nazi labor camp. By the end of the war, his family assumed that he must be dead. But as luck would have it, one of the liberators of his particular camp was a music-loving French officer who got him onto a train back to Rome. There, within the year, he made his stage debut as Colline in La Boheme. And as his last act aria had to be encored twice, he must have felt that his turbulent student days had had a happy ending. There too, he and his wife Franca still live in retirement, surrounded by his library of scores and his art collection, which includes, very suitably, no less a masterpiece than Caravaggio's painting, The Singer. Now, in any programme about a dramatic bass, it's difficult not to leave a somewhat gloomy impression. Basses do tend to play careworn kings and priests of huge solemnity. But to prove that Christoph is a bass who can sound happy, I'd like to end with a Russian folk song called Nastasia. It's a dialogue between a lusty young fellow and an initially hesitant maiden named Nastasia and it's couched in such suggestive terms that it's perhaps lucky it's in a foreign language. Be that as it may, from the glee of the singer's final utterance, you can judge how long Nastasia's hesitancy endures. <laughs> Принимай-ка, молодца, ой, Люшеньки, люли-люли, принимай-ка, молодца, ох ты, Настасья, пляши. Я бы рада творила, Буйный ветер сильно бьет, Буйный ветер сильно бьет, Да цветов головки рвет. Да цвет он в головке рвет, Частым дождичком сечет. Ой, Люшеньки, Люли, Люли, Частым дождичком сечет. Ох ты, Настасья, пляши! Ой! Частым дождичком сечет, Ретивое сердце жжет. Ой, Люшеньки, Boris Kristoff, closing this week's singer's choice with a Russian folk song, Nastasia.